Alright guys, one second, gotta itch my ear. Could have easily just itched it before this uh, video started, but you know, might as well waste 10 seconds. And actually, since I'm wasting time, I'll tell you guys a real quick story. I just went to the store because for some reason I've been craving Gatorade lately. So uh, I just went and picked up a bunch of Gatorade. And uh, I ran into one of my friend's mom's. And he actually lives down in Philadelphia now. And uh, it was kind of awkward whenever I run into people like that. Because I don't, they're not really, like, really my friends and I don't talk to them that often. So I was just like standing there and I'm like, so, how are you? And uh, there was like an awkward silence because we both like had nothing to say. And then we just walked away awkwardly. So I still feel a little awkward about it. So, um, alright, probably going to be thinking about that for like the next 10 years. So... Let's go ahead and get to this tutorial, which is talking more about tables. The first thing I want to show you guys how to do is... Now my eye itches. Why the heck does everything itch as soon as I start filming? All right. Let's go ahead and talk about the total row. So if you go to this table tools and design tab right here, you're going to see a checkbox called total row. Whenever you click that, actually scroll down so you guys can see exactly what it does. So right now this is the last row of the table and I'm going to check this total row checkbox. So what it does is it automatically goes to the end of the table and adds an additional column that totals up this column right here. It actually is smart. It picks the column that you want to total and it's cool in most cases because a lot of the times people work with like accounting forms and they actually need a total but for this case in this example it isn't really useful because having a sum of all of these players points there isn't really anything I can do with it however lucky for us the total row actually has a couple different options that we can choose we're not just stuck to the sum of all these numbers if you click this little drop down right here actually let me scroll up make sure it's on the screen you can actually choose things like average let me scroll in I don't know if you guys can see that. So in the total row, it's not just the total. You can also do something like average. And this is actually a lot more useful. So of all the players, they average 2.208 points per game. I can also do something like, um, I don't know, what's the max? So 7.32. So that would be the highest player. The min, zero, that's the lowest player. So that's just a nice little tip that I want to point out. A lot of people are like, okay, total row, does that mean like count all the rows or something? A lot of people will get confused whenever they see that. So I just thought I'd explain it real quick. Now, another cool thing that I want to point out is this. Let me scroll out a little bit, actually. A little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. Oh, there we go. That's a sweet spot right there. All right. So there are going to come a bunch of instances where you're going to want to remove duplicate rows. So right now, I don't have any duplicate rows, I know that. But say, for example, someone was, I don't know, they took um, a survey of everyone in the school, and they might have accidentally added some people twice to this spreadsheet. Now, obviously, we don't want anyone to count twice for a survey, so we need a, ray, a way to remove duplicate elements. So select any table cell right here and of course if you go to this table tools tab just like before you're gonna see a button under the tools little section right here that called remove duplicates and as you can see when I hover over it, it says delete duplicate rows from a sheet now actually when you click it it gives you some more options now these options right here are pretty much gonna say okay what exactly am I checking for what is my criteria I have to check for in order to remove a duplicate row? If you leave them all checked by default, then every single row or the rows that are um, that it checks for have to be 100% identical. If you just do something like um, name, then what it's going to check for is if any of the rows have the same name. So if two people were named Ryan Malone, and they had different salaries it would still remove them since they had the same name so typically most of the time you're gonna to want to leave all of those checked by default hit OK no duplicate values found OK 
And I'll just show you guys an example in case you don't, um, you didn't quite follow along there. So right now there are two different games playing. Um, Minnesota is playing the Rangers, and Montreal is playing Edmonton. So if I ever go to remove duplicates and just go to game info and click OK, what this is going to do is it's going to look at all of the info in the game info column and it's going to remove all the duplicates. So it says 86 duplicates removed. So there you can clearly see um, exactly what I was trying to demonstrate. But of course, that wasn't very useful. It was just a demonstration. So I'm going to go ahead and undo that. Now, one actual useful thing that you're going to want to do is I want to show you guys how to sort a table in a very um, cool kind of way. It's kind of a special way, but you know it's kind of cool to me. So if you ever go to your home tab, you're going to come across this sort and filter section and you're actually going to be using this a lot. Now by default, you're going to either click sort A to Z or sort Z to A like 95% of the time. However, if you ever want to have more control over your sort, then this is what you can do. You can click custom sort and this is going to allow you to add additional criteria to your sort. So by default, you just have one criteria. So I don't know, say you want to sort by position, what position the player plays. You can go ahead and do that, sort A to Z, and you'll be good. It'll sort by position. No need to look at that. However, what I want to do is after it sorts by position, I then want to sort by, I don't know, average points per game. So whenever I hit OK, look what happens. It first takes the position column and sorts it A to Z in alphabetical order. And then within each position, what it does is it takes each position and it sorts that data further from smallest to largest. So smallest to largest. And then when it gets the defense, it does it again, smallest to largest. And it does this with every single position. Pretty cool. So that's how you can have a little bit more control over your sorts. Like I said, very cool. And the last thing I want to point out is actually not even a feature that we have with tables, but actually how to turn this table back into a normal range. In other words, just turn it right into a normal spreadsheet again. It's actually really easy. Click anywhere in your table. And then in the table tools, all we have to do is hit convert to range. So it says convert it back into normal. That's pretty much what it's saying. So click that. Are you sure you want to do it? Because this is a pretty sweet table. Yes, we'll do it. And as you can see, it keeps all the styling, but you see that little drop down option that was on your headers. That is gone, and we don't have that cool table tab anymore, unfortunately. So, again, that is pretty much the basics of tables and how to work with the different rows, how to style it, how to convert it back into a range. You guys are pretty much now very efficient at tables. I don't want to say experts because there's a lot of stuff we have to cover still. But, I mean, we are definitely becoming a pro at Excel very quickly. So, for now, thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. And if you want any of the example files or if you have any questions at all about anything, then just go ahead and ask me on my forum. I'll be happy to answer them for you. So, uh, well, I'll see you guys next time.